We are live. This is the first f recorded fermented fiction meeting, fermented fiction podcast. Mm. Um, let's go. Let's introduce ourselves. I'm Andrew. That's the telephone. That's the telephone. I'm Reed. It's actually only plugged in for looks. Yeah, I was calling. <laughs> 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 like, like, Strictly telemarketers. <laughs> I'm Sean. I'm Colin. I'm Duncan. All right. This is Baxter. Uh, yeah, this is Baxter. And uh, this month and a half, we read uh, Wild Cards. We attempted to read Wild Cards. Speak for yourself. There's two, know, two of us. Two of us have completed the book. <laughs> three, three. The other three are in different stages. Put in a solid effort over the last couple of days. <laughs> or not at all. <laughs> uh, I just uh, came to drink. Uh, uh, fair enough. It's fair. I mean, to be fair, it is fermented fiction. It's, that's uh, half of the reason why we do this. Uh, half, <laughs> half of the reason yeah, to get drunk. So you're, you're doing real good on that part, man. Yeah. Pick up the slack. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the beers are uh, what keeps us all in it. Really. It's uh, true, yeah. It's, it's a good mix. I don't even know how the to only, uh, only way we could justify having this on a Friday or Saturday. We night. also <laughs> have some real fine beers going on here. Oh, yeah. 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 Let's talk got about some, the beers. Yeah, I got a Mill Street white IPA called, uh, geez, what is it even called? Let It Snow? Yes. That's, right. yeah. That's it. Yeah. I got a tasty beer. Can't remember the name of it, but it's real good. Comes in a fancy can. Look nice. <laughs> Great description. <laughs> <laughs> I drink it at Port Rexton Brewery uh, Salted Sour. And I have uh, Landwatch Brewery, Seamount, sorry, Seamount, uh, Season, Season. That's good. Mm. I have a Port Rex from Bond. There you go. Tasty treats. Good beers. And uh, the book. So the book is, it's a collection of short stories written by different authors. And it was published in 1989, if I'm not mistaken. Which yeah. is, it's way older than I thought it was. Mm -hmm. uh, George R. R. Martin was the editor of the collection, and and I believe this is pretty much just his brainchild as well. Like it's more of a project. The whole series is, you know, like it's um, yeah, they're in like twenty something now. And I feel like just to call it a book of short stories is kind of yeah. There, there's a the narrative know, narrative thread that runs. Ruined. Yes. yes. And, and so he, he definitely directed people on what they had to write about. And yeah. Everyone brought their own like without a flavor doubt. to the. For sure. Yeah. I think there was a general theme where like you know probably certain characters that were just kind of whatever. Although, I'd, I'd be interested to know if like some of the stories that they wrote whether they were written at different times and maybe. One of that the was authors. the editing of it? Yeah, you know? one of the authors had read the other person's story and then wrote a story inspired by that. Like, I, I know. Guess, there's there's self-referencing. There's a lot yeah. of self-referencing. Like, there is a lot you got to wonder sometimes, like, what is the process to write that kind of thing? Is it, it's like, very the first collaborative story process. one yeah. comes out, and then author two reads story one, and then yeah. writes story two. I don't, and then it, author three yeah. reads the first two and you know like is, does it go that way it reminds or me do they come up with a general story a general theme mm -hmm. and then that was George R. R. Martin's editing is to shove in some of those kinds of yeah. details yeah. it reminds me a lot of like a uh, like the pulp magazines that you would have yes. and so like it yeah. would be a monthly thing this is what it almost reminds me of it's like each story was probably something that was in one of the, like a, a serial right so like, like one month serial, they yeah. had this guy write a story short story and the next month it was somebody else and like then it's just this is all just compiled into one book it's probably not the way they did it but it, it just reads like that almost yeah. like they collected them from a magazine source and then just kind of threw them in a in a book, but it's, it's, it was, from what I got read, it was really good. I liked it. <laughs> story one was great. <laughs> story one was amazing. Well, story uh, one was Roger Zelazny, which I, like, I had just gotten into him within the past six or eight months, I think. I, I read one of his books, uh, his first book, it was like a, I think it was his first book, it was a Hugo Award winner, Lord of Light, and anyways, I, I ended up reading a bunch of his other stuff, and I 
I was very um, like as soon as I like it, that hooked me right from the get go because the first story wasn't like you would think it was, like it was like kind of like this. Yeah. It was the so the, the whole premise. Colin, right. tell us about the premise. Tell us about the premise of the book. <laughs> What's the name of the book? Wild cards. Oh, I should I should qualify that. <laughs> tell term. us tell us what you think the the, the book is about. Yeah. Poker. Basically, a poker tournament, but not mm-hmm. like Texas Hold'em, right. where you actually you only use wild cards. Yep. And uh, jokers. Yeah, yeah. Force and force. <laughs> yeah. Jokers. Jokers. Uh, uh, Jokers, are, Jokers wild. are wild. So there actually is an extra card in the deck now. Yeah. 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 That's pretty totally close. <laughs> that's like, yeah. I mean, not even not remotely. Even remotely. Yeah. He was, so I, I, I should, I should right. qualify that. It wasn't. So the Lazenby story was not the first story. The first story, I can't remember the name of the author. Because the first story was kind of set in the normal world. Like the whole. It was about Jet Boy, the. Uh, because it was all set back, like the first story was set back in the forties, like well, not well, the first. The first was because the first was the the, the arrival of the, the arrival, arrival of, uh, and the Doctor like, Tachyon. Yeah, and, yeah. Like, yeah. So and I guess the second story is like is Jeff Boy. Yes, yes. So, Jeff Boy. So, okay, so I'm thinking the first story after the the main right. focus of yes. the book. Comes the right. general premise yeah. of the book is because uh, it's more like a prologue. Yeah. The general yeah. premise of the book is basically that uh, it takes place in. You know, uh, another world, I guess, another reality, another timeline of uh, America. And it goes through all the different decades, but it starts out in the 40s. And. Around World War II. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's an alien spacecraft that basically. Uh, Nothing to do with the war whatsoever. No. But it just so happens that you're. It's you're, towards the, the end picture of the war. is U.S. wartime. Yeah. <laughs> and. And it just so happens that an alien spaceship crashes yeah, and with the intent of releasing a virus. Yes. So you, you find out that there's this virus has been released. However, a second ship also lands with the intent of stopping the release of yeah. said virus. And the virus basically, when exposed to people, uh, people who are affected by it, most, die. most of them die. However, some are given powers power, yeah. or given different traits ranging from really terrible to pretty fucking awesome and so then they're kind of classified that there's a classification system for them where you know the people that get the really good things are called aces and then the people who are up shit's creek um they are labeled the jokers because they have typically like physical deformities yes and no powers things like that now some jokers do have pretty minute powers yes that's too yeah. And some of them, some of the aces are uh, deuces, which is like kind of like their their powers are they physically look normal. They but just they're just don't have a, like a super awesome power. Yeah, yeah, yeah they like, they have some powers that are interesting, but then they have some drawbacks as well. And even the aces have some some of their powers have some drawbacks. Yeah, we kind of go into that with the stories. So it's it's very much a take on. It's very similar to, I guess, if you want to compare it to uh, X Men or anything like that, mutants and, and fucking people getting. Yeah, I mean, it's, it comes across that way too, especially when they start getting into the like um, identifying like, yeah. and you know like registries, registries kind of, of these people yeah. and what they can do and all those kinds of things. And the McCarthyism and all that kind of stuff. Like it's yeah. very much like a. Um, Historical fiction, almost. Yeah, yeah, and it's like you know, it's like this the othering of these people. It's definitely a thing. But yeah, so it's very similar to X Men. Very, very similar to yeah. X Men. Um, but the uh, yeah, I uh, I really enjoyed it. But I, uh, it was like it was, but it was like every story was so different. So like it was like yeah, every, every, like all the like right. all the all the authors had their own takes on things and yeah. there were all these like threads that kind of like you know references back to the previous like former ace. characters would yeah. pop and, up and, and normally it was the ace or be really talked about in yeah. other stories yeah. which then. was I really liked I yeah. I thought that yeah. was really cool because it wasn't like oh it's just all these people living segregated separate lives or separate realities it's that oh no they're mentioning 
so and so that you just read about in the last you know story or all these characters come back again and they reference these things that happened in other places and stuff yeah so I I, I enjoyed that um, yeah and I like I like that kind of like take on um, American history back in the day you know like going back to that because if you read about the actual history about it and you know Mac McCarthyism and all that stuff and it it's it runs exactly like it probably would have had that had gone on right yeah. like McCarthy yeah. would have strung them all up and they would have been put in yeah. the same camp as the Red Menace and all this kind of stuff but, and, but it was like it was just like in a way it was just really like I said historical fiction because like mm -hmm. one of the aces was um, geez, what was his name he was in that McCarthyism one but he was like a um, he was a black hero. And he like really oh, talked the about black it. eagle, the black eagle, yeah. yeah. But he talked head. It was or I can't head something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But it was like the main story was this, um, like just all American white guy dude who just kind of like when he got put up in front of the his nickname was Golden Boy. His yeah, it was Golden Boy. <laughs> oh, and he was yeah. just like he was like he was like he got put up in front of these like it was the McCarthy hearings essentially, and he just like totally flipped on everybody yeah and like he was betrayed, an yeah and he betrayed his best friend who was the black eagle and like like he's like it just screwed him over completely but like he, he was a, actually saying to him like so uh, the black eagle was saying to golden boy like throughout he's like look i cannot come out of this being like loud and like like i will just get crushed essentially so it was like a lot about like the racial there was a for lot of racism in all was, there. The whole thing was, for him because, was you know, it was very racially motivated yeah. that he wanted to, you know, use this as a platform for black rights and all yeah. the rest. But he was like, he was like, he was talking about how he had to like tone it down consistently, right? Because yes. like otherwise it would never yeah. fly, and it's like it, it, it still has a lot of modern um, significance. I think, like, I mean, it's it's <laughs> things have not changed at all. No. Heck of a lot, you know, in terms the of that kind of thing. But. Progressing, I was surprised after reading like the first few stories, mm. at how like quickly the time moved forward after that. Like by the end of the book, I mean, you're like thirty years later, you know, yeah. like it's oh, yeah. way yeah. later, and the political climate is like not even Shame. really an issue yeah. now. The political climate is just more of like around joker rights and like yeah. things like that you know it's like more of like you know civil but i mean but that's like even like you can like draw parallels to that with like you know um like homosexuality and like you yeah. know like it was very the gay much, rights movement yeah, versus yeah, yeah, yeah. you know joker rights all this kind of stuff like it was very like it was like you know because these no, people were just like considered freaks quote unquote freaks and it yeah. was like there was a lot of like <laughs> a lot of like you know like police like I and mean, it was like hippies too like it was all like you know people were getting attacked in the streets and then there was also like yeah. you know like they tried yeah. to like to make well that was happening in the 60s right and then yeah. in the 70s you had the um because that was I think the last story that I read was about that mm -hmm. um was with the lizard king yeah <laughs> no that, that, that was in the 60s I read that yeah that was, that was, that was really that was wow so well, basically, like that yeah. was much like about you know lots of hippies and things and whatever, but it was it was it, that one portrayed more like they talked about musicians and how like a lot yeah. of big musicians were aces. Had, were aces. Yeah. They had some type of yeah. hypnotic type powers or whatever, and <laughs> there was one guy specifically, the Lizard King, who yeah, okay. was the fucking lead the lead singer of whatever band, band. and Don't he could actually place. turn himself into basically like a giant lizard type guy I got but kill, also yeah. had some powers of persuasion he was persuasion also super strong, and, strong and he had this ability that could make them see the their deepest fears or their deep like yeah. it was like it was something that made people hallucinate something it was like he made people have an acid trip right, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah all around him and it was just like you know so the hippies were having a great time because they were seeing all yeah. sorts of wild shit and then 
the fucking National Guard were having a real bad time because they were all freaking the fuck out. Mm. Uh, but it was which yeah, culminated that, into a deadly ace on ace battle, which yes. was like one of the only. Mm. This is one of the only times that you uh, yeah, times that yeah. you see that in the whole yeah. book. Yeah, but it was and it turned into an ace on ace on ace because yeah. the ace, the other ace, was this guy who was like he was. Uh, I think it was a Jew who had escaped from the concentration camp. Yes. He escaped yes. from the Nazis. And he was just like so disgusted with the hippie movement because he yeah. was like, you don't know what your fight, like, you, you know. don't know what, what fascists these are. are. Yeah. Yes. You're calling this government fascists. Yeah, like, you, you don't, you don't know, know what that is. So, like, yeah. he had a huge problem with it. And, like, he had, he was just he had gotten to America, so he really loved and he was very patriotic. So, like, he saw these. And hippies. extremely religious. He, he was viewed his yeah. ace as, like, the devil is in him. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so. And so, like, and his was activated through rage, almost like yeah. the Hulk. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, he went to this protest where they're all protesting, the National Guard is there, and the fucking lizard king is doing his his thing and then this guy just rages out and starts beating the ever living he showed up to the fight with a giant wrench (laughs) (laughs) just beat the guy but then the the beauty of it was like there's this straight laced dude and like that was like he was friend zoned all day long he's getting cock blocked because he 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 was because he was just didn't like he just didn't he wouldn't like step like he was like this like cowardice personified yeah. and then eventually he was obsessed he, with this one he girl just that yeah. but he eventually really he, he, he took broke some through. LSD yeah. <laughs> he took some acid fucking yeah. turned into a goddamn uh, maniac super and, awesome ace yeah who yeah. just got a pendulum out of nowhere and was just beat the piss out, out of him kicking like some him. ass yeah. and then never be seen again yeah. Right, yeah, because he could never was, turn back into no, it. He yeah. took he, he took a shit he, he took more acid yeah. Yeah. to try and turn back into this thing, but he could, never could. Yeah. And so, like, he only, and they never actually explicitly said he was that guy. But it was, was just, implied. but it was very implied. implied. Yeah. It, they just basically there's this big fight going on between these two aces, and then just out of nowhere, this other ace just shows up, who's just like got no shirt on and he's just swinging around this like a leather pants and he lives on a chain and he's just picking the boys off and yeah. like just totally demolishing everyone and then he disappears again yeah <laughs> no, it's I, just like not before he not before he fucking bangs a bunch of he bangs the the girl of his dreams yeah that he's sorry. been wanting did he yeah he banged her but then oh. he didn't remember it that was the thing he had oh, fucking that's right yeah. when he, when he, he didn't remember up, actually being that guy either. no he just and thought maybe he was. Yeah, and, and he was thinking he was, but he wasn't sure. And then the whole time, his this girl who he's been obsessed with and been friends with the whole time, hoping to get close to her, she's just like, oh, I met the best, the best guy ever. He's amazing. So he's just like, I gotta fucking take more acid to try to get back <laughs> into that. And he never could turn back into him. So it's just like I gotta that wonder if maybe like in the next couple books, like if that yeah. that was I was, I was thinking that would be fucking hilarious. Like I was and like I, I, I was wonder like, actually about the next because I think this so obviously wild card series uh, is I think twenty seven books right now. Yeah, and this is the first one, but I think they're done in groupings. So this is um, the first grouping is three books. Um, okay. So I oh. I don't know what that means really. I, I haven't looked into it, so I don't know if that means that it's all the same characters start get recycled back and right. we see more of what they're doing, mm-hmm. or if it's just the timeline continues, or, or di- even different like countries that. or different parts of the world. Right, we do but obviously that they're grouped for a reason. So yeah, it's so I'm sure. Yeah. And it's like it's it keeps you going like it's good like i i was i i'll I'll be honest like i had no idea what this was about before i picked it up and i thought it was going to be a lot more juvenile but it was fucking it's not it's not it was like very like dark and it was was very very, like adult like there was like one the, the one character i remember i was talking to you about it and i was like and this thing gets fucked up, and it was because there was this character Fortunato, <laughs> who's a pimp. The, he's he's a, a pimp who is like he basically half Asian, half black, isn't he? Yeah, because uh, yeah, he's got his geishas on the go. That's right. He never yeah, wants them his, to uh, think of themselves as whores. No, they gotta be geishas. Yeah, which is real sweet. But he just like he didn't know he had the wild card because it's like the virus, like right. like a lot of people is like dormant for the longest yeah. time. It's activated somehow. And yeah. he had he was cutting. He met this girl who got him into 
tantric sex. Yeah, it was one of his girls yeah, that he ends up having sex with. And then she's like, let me show you what I can do. And she had studied. She wanted to be magic. Yeah. And she had studied. Like the occult stuff, like Alice yeah, right. Alistair Crowley, that kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. And then uh, practice some tantric sex on him, and basically, yeah, they just like blocked he... his ducts. Yeah. What's so, it like? Self. It gets really, really descriptive. Like, oh, yeah. yeah, just basically right before he's about to blow his load, she stops it, yeah. and then he gets superpowers. Goes <laughs> <laughs> back. He, gets, like, he goes right up into his forehead. Apparently, he's like, it's like this bulging third eye thing. Yeah. Like, oh, it's his just forehead so... just gets humongous. And he gets these fucking powers from it. Yeah. yeah. And uh... and the powers over the course of that story, that, plus that then, so like bizarre. later on, when he comes back in like a different oh, story, yeah, yeah. it's like. What powers do you have, man? Because like, in weird. that story, it's very much like his power becomes like, a, like an astro, physical form, like that he can also see things and infer things. And but he just, also becomes kind you know, of like, like a, all of that kind of stuff. Like very new priest kind of, yeah. He does. He literally blows but, like, a dead body and brings on, him back to life. But later on, it's like he can read minds. <laughs> in a, in a later <laughs> story, I forgot about that. He... Right. Blows a dead body, brings it back. Oh, life. that's right. Yeah. Then, oh, the story gets real. <laughs> Fuck fucking weird. Yeah, that was and, so Because he's trying to, like, the premise is he's trying to solve this murder because a bunch of his girls are getting murdered by this unknown serial killer kind of thing. And he's yeah. trying to track it down because the police aren't doing shit about it. And he ends up fucking finding out through using his powers, he's able to track down this weird ass guy who. The younger guy who's been butchering his girls, and he kills him by accident. But he wants to find out why, and he somehow inherently knows that he can bring Whoa. him back to life if he fucking <laughs> blows him. So he I literally he had sex with him. He I'm pretty sure he did have yes. sex with him. Yeah, no, did that's he? right. Yeah, because the, the he the he body had shit itself. Yeah, that's right. And it then was he has so sex with him this dead was body not to bring the him back to life. totally tame. Children's type book that I thought it was, but no, I thought it was not, not a comic book that you would give to your kids. No, it was so, much. so so off the wall. I was, I remember that it. story <laughs> in particular was so that's off the wall. That's when, when the in comparison to the yeah, rest of them, like the rest of them is like, you know, yeah, they're at least the in the superhero sure. vein, of like <laughs> you know, you can see that, but yeah. that one was a bizarre tale. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's it, it, were, it, were, it was like it was like a, I don't know if you guys like ever read Naked Lunch by um, William S. Burroughs, but it reminded me a whole fucking lot of that story. The movie that they keep talking about in Seinfeld. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, just very bizarre. Yeah, there was um, there was some good stories though, like, and early on, that first one when the virus gets released. The imagery of what is happening there, like when Croyd is just trying to see a first. Yeah, that, see was, what's that going was the Lasney story. That was the first one. Yeah, see what's going on, yeah. and then B just trying to make it back home. So yes. It's like a little kid who's out oh, with yeah. his other kid friend, and the shit that that kid is witnessing on the streets <laughs> as this virus is being released. It's like, oh my god. That guy just turned into a tree. Yeah. But that guy just melted into a puddle <laughs> and is super dead. And there's just goo people everywhere. <laughs> like everybody's just dying in these horrific, disgusting ways all over the place. Like, oh my yeah. god. Bro. Yeah, it gets just like that guy's on fire. This like, you know, it's so wild. Yeah. Yeah, I um, think And then later on, like you hear there was one of these other stories that had somebody who's like, whose father just kept like ripping to shreds and then coming oh, back yeah. together until he finally died. His heart fucking ever. ripped apart yeah. and blood shot out everywhere across right. the And that's what finally room. killed him, but he just yeah. kept like, and oh even when they God. were waiting to bury him, his wounds kept opening and healing up. And it's stuff. like these wild card viruses, it. like the Jokers. A, the people who died, like, died in the worst possible yeah. ways. 
the people who lived, half of them are just like... No, it's like 9 out of 10 are right. really messed up. Really yeah. messed up. You man. literally have like people who have like an anus for a face. They're just Their whole yeah. face is just one big fucking puckered anus. And you have others. Like, they were, they were described... I remember one that just kind of stuck with me. Is the like sad this, one of Angel Face. Like, she, oh, was, yeah. she was a prominent character. Oh, but yeah. Like, she was one who's... You touch her, you touch her, she everything. Like if you touch, she gets touched. It's just bruised. So like yeah. her feet are constantly just cracked and bleeding and yeah. bruised mm. to yeah, the point where like cool. making love would probably kill, kill her. her. Yeah, it's it's insane. Like so this, the things that some of them go through and in and what they're suffering. There's they're, another woman who's completely see through. Like just her skin is completely see through, but like. So just that was you just cool see story. all her organs and her her blood flowing through her body. Like everything. Like that was a cool that story because like that was, was like about that was about a normal dude. Like he was like he that was have, a very cool story. I think he, that was the last story. Yeah, I think. Yeah, it could have been. He didn't have any special powers, but he like he and trained trained. He was like in like Zen, like very much like yeah, you know, like a like a kung fu. But it was like it was like Martin. It was like a yeah. I think it was like martial arts but it was like very much like yeah like maybe like kung fu type thing but he was like very much played on his mindset not just his talents with martial arts but just like his mind and focus during all of those things yeah that mm-hmm. was that was pretty wild and he was like he was a killing machine yeah yeah but it was like he was just like straight up like the normie or whatever they call them yeah mm-hmm. Or it was implied Nat. that he might be a gnat, a gnat, but he might not be. Like, I was kind of like, was he really a Was gnat? he really? Can well, he like, really be that good really, yeah. as just a... And, and that's kind of the interesting Nat thing about, like, a lot of these yeah. people that you encounter, because you don't... Like, people assume that they're completely unaffected by it, and only to find out years later, oh, shit, no, it, it just all of a sudden activates. There was a lot of them There's that a were bunch way of them later, like, the later turtle life. is really later in life. Yep. No, he's well, not. No, no, Turtle not. was early. He was a kid. But he got but that later, was, later. Fortunato, though. Fortunato. Fortunato. Like, it wasn't until his fucking semen went up into his forehead that all of a sudden it was <laughs> right. just like, oh, I got fucking voodoo powers now. Yeah. But, but that, was a, that was a thought about it. The, after the stories, there was like these little clippings, and they talked about these different things, and like one of them was like, basically it was like just the, like it was supposed to be like newspaper clipping or whatever, but they were like talking about the fact that the wild card well, wild card virus was like so widespread and so um, you know like it was like dormant in so many people and, like, and know, it's yeah. also generational it so is, yeah. kids like before like after the wild card virus has been released like 20 years later somebody has a kid and that kid Gets it. is a joker or is has a superpower or something like that so it's just like something that's going to go on forever mm, yeah some of the like some of the stories were interesting one well, like that kid going back to um, oh, I can't remember Croyd. his name Croyd like I mean his power that's like my favorite sleeper. he's, he's just, very interesting the because sleeper, yeah. the sleeper because he, he basically his whole power is, is that he ends up falling asleep a bunch and whenever he wakes up again he has new powers but he'll, he'll fall asleep for like months yeah. yeah and it could be an ace or it could be and could be not job. only just powers he physically complete different yeah, appearance changes, like, yeah so like he'll just change into like now i'm a like the first one is just like i'm an adult mm. man yeah. he was like a 10 year old boy <laughs> yeah yeah and adult man who's super strong i think yes. was the first one that yeah. he had. Yeah, but he got right into like fever <laughs> crying right away right. so there was right. a dog right. <laughs> so one of the one of the things his dad like, died yeah. during yes. the outbreak and but he made like dogs. he met a dog who was like a joker <laughs> it was a he dude was a human. joker <laughs> the dude who turned a, into a dog but he was like yeah. a thief and he tried to like he was like hey, man you gotta go over here and steal all this shit yeah. he was like this, this gullible child is this a bad thing it reminded me like Pope I mean, Pinocchio he was he was yeah very you know? much so but yeah. actually interestingly <laughs> enough so so there's this character who uh, Dr. Tachyon they call him who's the, the alien, alien. Yeah. he's the good alien who actually comes to try to prevent the release of this virus so on his home planet they're just like humans it's the closest to humans they can mm-hmm. come to uh, they have this 
pretty wild society where they're just like these really big prominent families and they all already kind of have powers yeah, and they develop they, this yeah. virus mm -hmm. to enhance their powers um, but they know that it fucks people up and whatever but they want some people wanted to test out the virus so they found earth who's like very compatible to their genealogy mm -hmm. to try and release it and he thought it was a bad thing to do so then he tries to stop them the ship Fails. ends up crashing the, the first ship does yeah. and then then this guy ends up just like who's like a criminal a ref like he just got out of prison <laughs> and his henchmen happen upon this canister full of virus. Oh, the old man finds it first. And right, they just steal some it from dude, the and then they get it from this guy, and then they just bring Great it to times. their like boss, who's just gotten out of prison and was like, basically like, I'm not doing crime anymore, and then this thing falls in his lap, and he's like, I'm gonna do crime. Maybe, maybe we're gonna do a little more crime. And then he gets this <laughs> fucking hot air balloon, like, he, or like, he's got a Zeppelin. Zeppelin, and just is like, pay me millions of dollars, or I'm releasing this thing in, over the world. And then he does it anyway. <laughs> because, because, he ended up figuring out what it was, because like, um, when Dr. Tachyon lands, the government goes and gets him, and then he's like, this is what's going on right now. We need to find that virus, because it's on another ship. Mm -hmm. um, so we need to get it. And then, I guess, news of that got released everywhere, and this guy's like, I got it. I'm going to release it. Yeah. And then Jet and so Boy comes Jet to save the day. Fucking Jet Boy. I just, the whole book, I really expected to see Jet Boy. To be honest, like, I yeah. thought he was... He croaked right away. <laughs> I thought he was going to be like, uh, like a punk. Because at some point it got mentioned that they saw like a ghost of Jet Boy flying around and stuff. So then I was like, well, that could be the Black Eagle, I guess, because he flies. Mm -hmm. Or, or maybe or it's, anybody. maybe it is Jet Boy. Maybe like his spirit is like, you know, an Maybe there's some sort of weird shit happening. Right. And I really expected to see that at some and, yeah. point. Because he was such like a hero. Yeah. In and Jet Boy, like I mean, Jet Boy was like he was in World War Two. He was this kid who basically flew Captain these, America. Yeah, he flew these uh, without powers. Like a kid, kid. Yeah, he was like a kid, but he flew these like uh, fighters, and he was just like like a like a prodigy, and just killed a bunch of Nazis. And they gave him a jet. Nobody had jets. Mm -hmm. It was it was basically the the premise of Captain America, except Over instead here. of like. Getting serum yeah, injected into you, you just got this wacky jet plane that nobody else has, <laughs> and he's just going to almost like the Rocketeer. The yeah, I was thinking the Rocketeer. Yeah, like, yeah. very much like the Rocketeer. And uh, yeah, he just goes around killing some Nazis. Um, and he does a pretty good job of it too. But yeah, then he just comes back and he's just trying to figure out what the hell he's supposed to do with his life, and then this happens, so he's awesome. like, oh, time to save the day again. And then ends up blowing up the Zeppelin and then releasing the virus and murdering a ton I like that he people. crashed his plane right into it. Yeah, he slammed the plane right into it. The first thing he does, he doesn't even try and... Does he? Yeah. So really... And then, but they all... What, what was interesting is that they all hail him as, like, the biggest hero, the biggest patriot ever, even though, realistically, it's his fault that the fucking thing... Exploded in the first place, releasing the virus. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean that that dude that was he gave it his good old American try. That dude who uh, he was gonna blow it up anyways. I mean, like he was he though? I, I don't think, think he was. Thing, he was gonna he was gonna say he was going to release only a little bit of the virus. I think it was all of it. But then he was life. like, no, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna release the whole virus. They <laughs> <laughs> all I released a little bit of it. Um, yeah. Now, I'll be honest, my favorite story out of them all, even though, like, the uh, Fortunato was a close second, it was so, so wacky. Yeah. My favorite story was uh, the Hunter S. Thompson one, because it was just, like, I, I was listening to the audiobook, and that section was fantastic, because the guy who was reading it does it in the best impression of Hunter S. Thompson ever. And it's just, he's reading that whole short okay. story. I'm, I'm trying to remember this one, that one. It's Hunter S. Thompson. He just basically goes into uh, Joker Town 
uh, and like hangs out with a bunch of them and ends up hanging out with this one Joker who's like tripping on fucking. Oh yeah, that was one of the interstitial. One of the, one of the interludes. It's a very short little thing, but it's so fucking funny because it's just it's fear and loathing in Joker Town. Yeah. And it's just Hunter S. Thompson, like. I've read and it's actually Hunter S. Thompson? No, well, no, no. It's like no. It's, it's like the, in his style, like the it's, the Gonzo journalism. Yeah. Like. Okay. But it's it's Hunter S. Thompson in in Joker. In like, Joker. Like, I mean, it's like very much a caricature of Tom. Like it's like it's like over the top. The well, they introduced it. I don't know. I I they, I, I assume oh, it and was written by him. Write the article. Or yeah, whatever. no, he's yeah. writing the article about going to Joker Town. Because yes. remember, like I mean, he wrote the. Uh, the the hell he was when like embedded Hell's himself Angels in the and Hell's Angels. Angels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But and so like it was kind of like that, but with Joker Town. Yeah. So what happens in? So he goes to Joker Town, ends up meeting this. He goes out for a piss because he thinks it's safer than actually pissing in the bathroom, and then he runs into this like Joker who's just like staring at him, and he's just like, "Hey, you want to know where we can get some girls and stuff?" And he's like, "Yeah, sure. Let's let's fucking go." And so he follows this Joker around, and the Joker ends up doing fucking rails or something and like the two of them are high as a kite and then like the joker is progressively getting more and more aggressive and like the cops are pulling him over and he's just like flipping out at him and hunter s thompson says something about like and some of my best friends are jokers and he fucking whirls on him he's like i'm not a joker i'm a fucking ace and then, then he like scales this building the best is at the end because he describes oh, it as he's scaling this I building i remember exactly what you're talking about <laughs> yeah. and the guy who's scaling the building was Croyd. Yeah. Oh, yes. Right. Which is the best part the of best it. Part of it. And so he's scaling the building and then kid. he's just like howls at the moon and then literally pisses on the cops and Hunter S. Thompson and then flies off into the, into yeah. the night. So, and it was just so amazing because it was yeah. all done in the style of Hunter S. Thompson. Like Fear and Loathing Las Vegas. So this all kid it was ends amazing. Up, yeah. So yeah, his Joker power at that point, he had like spider legs mm. like he was just like this that's right. fucked up spider thing legs. so yeah. sometimes when he wakes up like he's a joker yeah. and he just looks totally and then fall asleep so the first time that legs. he wakes yeah. up as a joker then like after that he goes back to sleep for months and then he mm. wakes up again and he's got a you know he's an ace again the best Some type is of like ace. The, 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 but he realizes like I don't ever want to be a joker again Oh my god. I, stay I, I need to stay awake. So then he just starts just getting, getting into the drugs. He gets into the speed. Like, he gets speed. Yeah. speed and stuff. Yeah. And he's doing speed nonstop. <laughs> but then that progresses into like, I think this is the next time you even hear yeah. about this. Oh guy. yeah. But the main thing is like, in that original a huge story. drug fiend. Yeah. Is. That original and story also is. a joker. Yeah. But in that original story, yes, he also he, comes he to like, tries to like, he tries to keep going. Like, trying to keep going. And like, Normally he's asleep during the transformation, and this one he's like turning into it, and he's like wants to go to his sister's wedding, and oh, so yeah. he's like he's getting the speed, and he's like he's, like, he's got to go to sleep, ends up turning into a fucking gargoyle in the middle of the wedding, and he's just flying really, out of the fucking yeah. like, the chapel. It's just hilarious. Yeah, he's got a wild. Power, man. I like how cool he was in the last time that you see him. Yeah, though. Yeah, yeah. He's just like. He's just straight up cool. But and it's during like, that, yeah. He's like this ghost girl. He meets ghost he girl. Ghost girl, yeah. And uh, he's just like this cool dude who just goes to all the best parties because they have all the best drugs. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. And he, he's yeah. just like, man, you started this off as like a 10 year old kid. I know. You know, <laughs> <he's doing laughs> speed. You know like, you know, like, you totally got thrown into the yeah, <laughs> So fucked up. Uh, and he's still just yeah. committing crimes. Like, yeah. same thing in Ghost Girl. Well, he's like trying to get Ghost Girl. He's trying to get Ghost Girl too. He's like, oh man. I remember when through. I used to walk through walls, it was awesome, yeah. and I stole some ch or no, I got out of prison, <laughs> yeah. and uh, yeah, they put him in there asleep, and he woke up, and they went to his cell, and he was gone, because <laughs> he just walked right through it. Yeah. yeah. The, um, it was interesting to me, though, like, some of the powers, like, some of the aces, even, they didn't portray it as so much as that, oh, you just won the lotto, and you're, you got the best powers in the world, and you're fucking the superhero, and you're the best. They portray it as a very realistic and like it has some really terrible repercussions. Like fucking brain yeah. trust. She got yeah, fucked. she got fucked big time. So she has she's an ace. She's considered an ace. Her power is that she can actually absorb the memories full of mind. Enough, full mind. Not even memories. Else. It's like personality. Yeah. And mind so she, she 
she gets hired by the government, she goes around, uh, it's shortly after World War II, and she starts interviewing all of these brilliant scientists, so like, she's got, like Einstein. She's got and, six of the top yeah. people. So it's Einstein, it's a couple people that worked on the atom bomb. Yeah, so uh, all of them, she got has all of their memories, all of their personality, everything in her mind. Problem is, of course, that like, as she's doing that, she's getting more and more split personalities and all this stuff, and she has a hard time controlling it. So she ends up hooking up with the alien, Dr. Tachyon, and he kind of helps her through it, giving her these he also has mind control, mind control powers. powers and being able to partition off her mind so that it's not causing so many problems. But then when they get, when she gets into a stressful situation, all of a sudden she can't, she loses control over all this. So she's starting, all of these things are starting to like, all these different personalities start appearing. And so Tachyon, in an attempt to save her, because he loves her, he just like drives like a mental spike through her head to try and help her, but it ends up bringing, breaking, her mind. breaking her mind. She goes insane, and so she's committed to an, a sanatorium for the rest of her life. And she spends like her vocal box ends up getting torn out because she's just spending her days having conversations as these different people, twenty four seven. So she has no rest, and she's just in this room conversing as these different people and yeah. yeah she just dies a horrible horrible death and it's just like it Wait, breaks uh, breaks Tachyon but then it, but the it does stories it. about that was like Tachyon he has a really good he comes, he comes back he redeems himself he does cause he like he, yeah. uh, he was like he nice. turns into I like a fucking that. wreck like and the funny just thing I, what I liked about like. Tachyon was that he dressed like a fucking weird fop and like it was like <laughs> reference they constantly. constantly. <laughs> Every time that you see this character, they keep talking about how he looks like a fucking like marching band leader. Yeah, yeah. And then, like, or like some that. like guy from the Renaissance, yeah. like some like strangely dressed. That's what he's wearing. Like, like I picture like a, like a feather the, in his hair. Yeah, like, yeah. A feather in his hat, right. and I picture like the uh, pirate shirt from Seinfeld, and like just the puppy in, shirt. in the big. Epaulets on yeah. the uh, Well, yeah. and it's it's yeah. funny because like in the audiobook, it doesn't help because whenever the guy does his voice, it's always this French accent that <laughs> turns into this uh, almost a Spanish accent sometimes, and he speaks like that, and it's just like I just picture him in my head as like this uh, fucking what was that guy's name Montoya Esteban or whatever is uh, Anigo Montoya. Anigo Montoya. 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 Yeah, yeah, he's similar. To, like I just picture him <laughs> that this foppish guy. I'm like. Holy fuck, man. This is great. Yeah. That's a great voice for him. And it's funny that he never changed his style. Like, no, it doesn't give like, a shit. He's homeless and he still looks the same way. Well, that's and what it was funny. Like, and, then, and then, like, later on, he's, he's drinking, like, homeless, box and just wine con- and shit. Yeah. Yeah. And he's just constantly dressing as ridiculous as possible. It's like, man, this story has progressed 30 years and you have not adopted the like, Earth's attire. Stuff. Like, you have... To, and, and, like, these are Earth clothes you're wearing. You've gone out of your way to find the weirdest looking <laughs> shit to put on yourself. Yeah. Yeah. That's so weird. And but, but it was like, what got me about it is, like, the guy never aged, or it seemed like he never aged. No. He seemed like, like he, he was, like, aged less. Yeah, different like yeah. rate than everybody else. Yeah. Um, I will say, I liked most of the stories I read. There was... Uh, one though I that and it was interesting because it was towards the end I think it was the second last story I, I read uh, it's a story right before the puppet master or the puppet man yeah um, I could not give two one bucks of the holy shit that went on forever and I yeah it, it did go on for a long time and but I did end up liking like, it I didn't understand bit. like the, the, the there was a girl who turned into a a, a bus or a train or something yeah, like, I didn't I get, don't get it at all she was just a train. I and I, there was like the guy who was like turned into an alligator, and he was like, okay. Yeah, uh, sure. Like he him, was I get that. alligator. I mean, that's fine. He was literally the the alligator guy from. Uh, Teenage I get Turtles. him, and I get the uh, you know homeless woman who speaks to animals. Like I get their whole yeah, yeah. scene. Their part of that story was all fine. It's the girl who turns into a train. That's like I don't, I don't get that. this. This I didn't even like. Her. I was like trying to like pick up like, like, because it was all told in these like sort of like. It was almost like it was supposed to be like jarring, like the way it was told, and sort of like, oh, what's going on? It's like seriously, what the fuck is going I on? I have right? no <laughs> idea. There was no 
easy way to follow. Right. Well, and like first, like because they they bring it up of like you know, the girl is all like the social worker in that. Yeah. Social worker slash mob Mom, boss's daughter, daughter is sure. is looking for her friend, contrived. and she keeps seeing like obvious. There's like lyrics that her friend has written that appear on this train all the time. So it's yeah. like, but they're changing too. So yeah. it's like, okay, the friend is down here somewhere. Yeah. Something's going on for sure. Oh, she's the train. But then it's just <laughs> like she is the train. It just didn't. How did that was So weird. She disappeared from her hospital room and somehow turned into a train and ended up down in the subway. Yeah. I don't. I don't really understand any of it. And I at the end and of what it, she it just can left do me angry. too. Like she can do stuff. Like she can kill people. And mm. you know. Yeah, she had that. The fucking mob boss got eaten by some random. Like I, I gathered, she's I, just some type of. Spirit that you know can inhabits morph things. into whatever, or maybe inhabits things is another way to look at it. Maybe either way, guys. afterwards they talk about how Dr. Tachyon's making some progress with her, yeah, and is trying to fix her. So that's the good. other thing, uh, Colin, is that Dr. Tachyon also has a a potential cure <laughs> for the wild card virus. You don't need to read this book yet. You don't even need to read it. Oh, no, we're giving you the, the lowdown. Uh, yeah, Dr. Tachyon has a cure, but it only works some of the time, and sometimes it makes things worse. Yeah. Yes. So it's like... So it's 30% it's chance. It's like wild card virus A is like just like a... Like drawing a card out of a deck of cards, yeah. and then the cure is on top of that... You're taking a big chance as well. Like, yep. Brutal. You might just to, die from the cure. cure. You might, it might be cured. Well, that was like, or, you know, something else might change. It was know? like Lizard King. He took the cure and then like six months later he was dead just because his fucking meta- his body couldn't handle the amount of drugs, the amount that, of he drugs that he consumed was while doing. he was Lizard King. Yeah. Yeah. His powers were the only thing that was keeping him alive. Yeah. <laughs> and so he lost that and he fucking yeah, died. That was, yeah. that was ridiculous. That was great. That that story was. But they talked about like the stones were good. Aces. Mm. Yeah. And uh, you know, like a few other bands. A story know. started out. I didn't care for it whatsoever. I didn't either, man. And that then, was one that I was kind of like, picked up when it started getting into like that fight scene. That was the only thing that kept me in it. Yeah. Because other than that, I kept being like, oh. the Lizard King itself. Like they kept destru- describing this guy, and sounds cool. I just kept thinking like, I don't totally get it yeah i don't get what type of ace this lizard king is Is, Mm. does he turn into a big lizard does he not and even once he actually did it yeah it kind of was a little vague as well like it more so seemed like he made people hallucinate 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 see that he did Mm. but he did in fact have like you know super super strong strong and you know those kinds of things yeah but it seemed but like was it wasn't, wasn't I am the lizard queen or something? Wasn't that like a that's Lisa Simpson? Uh, Lisa Simpson. But that was it. I am yeah, the lizard said, king. Yeah, but you said, Colin, what did you no, say about the doors? Morrison, Morrison, Jim Morrison. Jim Morrison. Jim Morrison. Yeah. Yeah. Was it Jim so Morrison said I'm the lizard king? Yeah. 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 It's based on him. Yeah. I suppose. Yeah. I would assume. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, he, he died. <laughs> he died shortly after, right when he right. moved away. When he said, died. Yeah. Yeah. But they definitely didn't say it was the Doors. Cause it was, no. I can't remember what the band's name was. No, it was something the random. The inferences. Um, but yeah, you know, there was a lot of inferences there where like certain people were, oh, they drew obviously illusions from Yeah. No, I didn't, I didn't really care too much for that story until the fight scene, which I was fight like, scene was great. this is actually was, super cool. This is fun. Because you've never gotten any real no. fight scenes and it was to this. and it was interesting, like just from a perspective of if you think about it, historically, like had the hippies had something like that, yeah, that would have turned fucking yeah. What real if the fucking... hippies had a, some super powered dude who was coming to their protest, right? Who was leading the protest? Yeah. What if you had some Hulk, Hulk other just... Hulk dude who's Hulk like, like the squares, ultra religious the and, and yeah. <laughs> But not even for the squares. Hulk had no time you know? for like it was less for the squares bullshit. and more like these hippies don't know what the fuck they're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Well, it's, it's but, but I mean that was part of like I think there was that element as well. Like you know, like the fucking sixties was only twenty years after the forties. Right. Like people like 
people who were in the shit must have been incredibly pissed off by oh, people yeah, who were just being like there's like you know who were upset with the status quo considering what the status quo was yeah. and could have been right but i mean you know? think about yeah. i mean even draw parallels to nowadays where you have a lot of people who you know from like our parents generation or even even a bit younger than that who look at say like the 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 20 year olds that are coming up and being like you guys are so fucking entitled you have no fucking idea that's general every generation it's every, every generation, generation does for that, sure yeah. but like it draws parallels to all of that shit as well right like it's like you don't know what the fuck you're talking about when you're when you're talking about you know fascism you don't know what actual fascism is because you didn't live it right and this guy who was in the concentration camps like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. clearly he had a first hand fucking knowledge of it right so he looked at this as just like this is fucking front this yeah. is an affront to him and and being super religious didn't help either because <laughs> he thought all of their powers were just fucking part of the devil just the devil man yeah and even his own powers even right? his own but yeah. yeah um yeah there was some cool ones there is there any that we haven't really talked too much about I'm um, trying to think of any of the stories that we had. I mean, we, the we, hearing was interesting. I really yeah. liked the hearing. That I was thought. the one we didn't get into much of. The Golden Boy. And Golden Shed Boy. So. so Golden Boy. Um, also, a guy who I'm sure must come up in. So this is why, like, he I'm almost interested watch. in the next two books to see because if they're a grouping of three, uh, David Hurstein, the guy who brought Hurstein or whatever. No, he's the guy who. Um, influences people yes. he's got the pheromones yeah. and stuff like that uh, yeah, yeah. and he disappears yeah. yeah and they talk about him they a do. couple times throughout the book what, you never of how he just disappears yeah. what? but in the beginning or not not during the that story it was like the next story mm -hmm. and they talk about how or no it was in the interlude that's what it was it was in one of the um in-betweens and it talks about like it progressed the po politics yeah a ways and it talked about scare and it talked about like all the different um, political entities that involved like basically getting aces and yeah. and categorizing them. Well, what was the one where you were like, like the, there's a couple stories we haven't talked how, about. Like really the McCarthyism of how David Hurstein is out there uh, yeah, turning everyone against McCarthy <laughs> and like turning there's, everyone against uh, like bending the you know the the general population into yeah, I, I, what it should be and yeah. all that stuff and it's like you don't know if that's true or not but like Good partly I, when I was reading it, I was like oh man I hope that's true that's that pretty cool. awesome yeah now at the same time it's interesting because like they did the whole McCarthy thing and, and they talked about him and I, I actually had to go look up because I didn't know a lot about McCarthy no. like, like I knew what he had done, but I didn't know the history of like where he ended up or what happened to him afterwards. And it's exactly what happened to him. Like he, he s soon got fucked over because everybody grew tired of the whole red menace thing. Right. And then he was actually censored by Congress. And then after that, he deteriorated very quickly and then ended up dying early on right. uh, from uh, a mixture of, from what I heard, was hepatitis and. Um, and uh, cirrhosis of the liver. He was an alcoholic. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and he just died in this in this hospital. Um, so and uh, they, and becoming very paranoid as well, right? So it's it's very interesting that they still incorporate a lot of that into it. Uh, but one of the story, like there's two stories that we didn't talk about. Uh, I just realized there's one of them was about uh, that directly relates to McCarthyism and, and that kind of thing because. The guy was Polish, and he was an older man who could freeze time. That was what I was oh, thinking of. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was an awesome story. That was I a really fantastic like story one, yeah. because he was terrified. He was a he was a government agent. He worked, he worked for, for the CIA. For the CIA. He didn't want to but give up. But he didn't want story. to let people know that he had this power because he was terrified. Because he had heard stories that anybody who's an ace is sent away to this camp and they're, they're never. It's basically like the gulag. You're never seen. Never seen again. 
Which it's, is exactly where he gets sent, which is like... It's exactly. Wrong. Well, but it's not. No, it's he not. gets to keep his real life. Yeah. No, no, no. He gets sent to the Oh, he gets Russian, sent to yes, Russian Gulag to, to, to save Gula. another ace. Yeah. 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 But it was really interesting because his, his power, again, uh, has a detriment to it. Because, yes, he's able to move through time. And he's able to but freeze time but for up to about 10 or 11 minutes. But he ages it, himself. It, it, he ages himself while he does that. So it's like... They have lots of instances where he, like, he ended up, this car was flying towards him and he stops time and like ends up, some of his hair falls out because he's just, he's aged like right. a couple of years just from doing that. Right. So it was really interesting. But you know, he didn't care. He didn't, no, because he was doing it for he his was country. Doing it for he was very country. patriotic. He was yeah. super patriotic. Yeah. And um, yeah, no, I liked that story a lot. Really and uh, I thought it was wild that during that story, he's talking about so he's been in the CIA forever and him and his wife like she doesn't want him to tell no. anybody about his ace because of what government does to aces and you're going to disappear and all these things are going to happen yeah, and you're old so already. he has sh- and he has never told anybody else about his ace but <laughs> so he shares this with his wife, but she doesn't know that he works for the CIA. Like he has never yeah. told her that. He's never told yeah. her that she works for the CIA. Yeah. But he's told her that he's got an ace. And well, so she figured like, it out. Funny, that, right? that was the interesting part. She actually figured out that he had this power. It wasn't even that he right. straight up told her. She said like she realized that something was different There's about him. She knew, yeah, yeah. and she deduced the fact that he had not necessarily something. the power, but he he was an ace. Yeah. Yet that was uh, she didn't that was a really that. cool story, it and really it was cool. funny. I liked um, just this t- describing the guy that he's going to save, the pilot. Yeah. Um, when they, when um, the report came from Russia about the pilot, and they were like, because. Um, before you know anything about this pilot being like it's just like a there's a jet and it's just like okay well you assume like maybe he's flying some type of really fancy plane that you know like jet boy like yeah. jet boy got the best plane so well, this like guy that, might like be the same the kind black, of thing black ops, and it's like all about high, the like cameras the and man. like this is where we're getting all our intel mm-hmm. so it's like this guy who's just flying above spy country plane. spy plane and he's USSR. getting all this intel Fine. but when they release their report they specifically say okay cameras like like something to the effect of like we got the plane we've recovered this plane blah 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 it's this type of plane it's whatever and it's got subpar cameras and blah blah blah, and so on and so forth and all these things and it's like i remember reading that part and thinking that's very bizarre that they came out and said, like, that the cameras. cameras aren't that good, yeah. given that you're led to believe this whole time that the spy whole thing plane. is like, this is a spy plane mm-hmm. and whatever. And then later you learn that, no, it's, it's because the ace, the is, ace flying. is flying it, has like telescopic vision and is looking and seeing everything and reporting what he sees yeah. instead of the cameras. Which relates to... Just super cool. Yeah, and it relates to the other story that we didn't talk about yet, which is the director who has the focus power. He is a director on the TV series. Yes. And he's like this German ex, uh, ex-rocket ex scientist from Germany who worked for the Nazis. Yeah. And then came over uh, to... Or fled the... the Nazi Germany and became a uh, movie director over in Hollywood. Right. And so he's directing this TV show and one of his the main stars of the actor. It's very much a uh, a Flash Gordon type TV show. It's and, fucking pure cheese. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, the the main actor uh, goes on a fucking binge of being constantly late and shit for his thing and also constantly fucked up on drugs as well from yeah, what yeah. We, we gather but there's also a serial killer going around called the Medusa serial he's killer turning who's turning uh, jokers to stone um, and they're winding up is it just jokers though? it is jokers yeah they identify okay. there's jokers that are being uh, targeted 
But anyways, we find out that because uh, he starts getting a private eye to, to fucking investigate. Right. I really like that story he too. He gets the private eye to investigate really cool. the it was very lead much, of um, the show Ellie Noir because he thing. wants to be like, I'm running yeah. a show. Yeah. I want to see what's going on with my lead actor and why he's mm. showing up late and shit. Yeah. And they're like, we know you've sent the private eye. Yeah, <laughs> we're all we're both aces. Like we're both we're fucking kill you. Like it was right. like, very much mm. like. Yeah, it was very much like Eleanor. Yeah, it was like, pretty wild that yeah, whole showdown at the end. Yeah, and gonna blow up the what whole. What was I? I, I'm having a lapse here. What was the focus power? So he could he could focus in on details, but he could also macro, I think, or something like that. So his his vision was like, like he could just. Right. I thought he slowed things down. He had some sort of. I think Green's right. They had a very good eye for. It's almost like a camera. It's like magnification. It made, like it made him that. very good at being a director. Yeah, he was very. Well, I thought he could slow perceptive. it down though, like, and he could move faster because there was times where shit would happen, and he would be like, "I didn't have time to use my focus to get out of that situation." Oh. And I thought that Never was kind that of point. how it happened, that it was like... Could be. He could see stuff for sure, but when he was doing that, it was like it it made it move slow motion to right. him. Uh, but maybe I'm mis... I, that I story was I one that I, I think I had read it like very It wasn't super clear what I, his uh, power was. It yeah. wasn't super clear. He had the power of focus. It's all we really gathered from it, but it, I, I thought it was he got like because yeah, well, they, they talked about focus and they talked about the pronunciation of focus yeah, with yeah. a K and then yeah, 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 yeah. 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 yeah, but it was interesting because like that one, I, I really just liked the theme of it, and, and then it was a, it had a very um, like a gumshoe kind of yeah. feel it to did, it, yeah, and. Uh, um, yeah, it was like it was very much. And their powers were interesting it was, too. It was like one of the old hard boiled techniques. So their yeah. powers were cool. It was it like. Was, it was weird. It wasn't. I don't even know if they were aces. Kind of shit, right? Yeah, because one soul stole a soul and the other one had to feed off the actual body itself. Right. So one of them, basically, it was the. Uh, from what I remember, the actor and his agent, agent. who was just this hulking dude. It was right. basically a crony slash mob kind of. Guy, um, the mob guy had the ability to turn people to stone, but it was as if he was sapping the life force out yeah, of them. That's right. And then the it was like and oh and, like and Gorgon. Yeah, and the um, the actor could actually he was the perfect actor because he actually stole the people's personalities. That's right. So he stole their souls, so he absorbed their personalities, so he could act exactly like them if right. he wanted to. So he became the and like the guy even described. Him. He's the perfect actor because he's just a shell that just fills himself up with other people's right. souls so that yeah. he can act like them. And so yeah. he had a dependency on it. And yeah, so he would always have these like this book had a lot with it. going on. Had a lot of shit going on, man. It was it was every like story to pack was these big. things into these short stories, yeah. like yeah. But that's why lot, you need a lot, lot of different of detail, authors. A lot of detail, uh, a lot of. You wouldn't have been able to do this if it was one author. It would have been disjointed and all over the place. Yeah. You wonder how many authors there are in total of across the 27 it's books. Be a lot. So many. Yeah. So, Duncan, what was your favorite story? Sleepy Boy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's all good. All right, well, I suppose that's a, as good a, enough a time as any to uh, call it on this one. But I mean, I liked it. I, I liked like it a lot. Shit, uh, look. I was, I was, I was actually. Was really uh, this was my book to choose, yeah, and I'm it. very, very happy with that if choice. I, if I had, like, I'm, I'm trying to read the first three at some point. Yeah. yeah. Like, it, like I'd like to read it on yeah. the list to see. I would too. Yeah. If they're all within the same world, I'd definitely read the second and third. It was, like, it was not what I thought it was going to be whatsoever, and it was a positive thing. Yeah. I think it's kind of what I thought it was going to be just There's stories about different heroes but hell, I think it was better than I thought yeah. just in yeah. terms of how they tied together at yeah. all you know like and um, yeah. yeah even stories that didn't tie together whatsoever they still felt like in the realm of the yeah. book you know like you think about that sewer type story and it's yeah. like it doesn't have anything, to do, to, do with anything with else. to do with this first couple no. yeah. 
But it was well, like, it's still interesting. It, was like it a, still it was fits a, right in, man. Yeah. You know, it's still giving you the history of these people and what's going on. And yeah, you know, I forget. I, I, I set the mention. tone of that world. It reminded me a lot of I don't know if you guys ever read uh, New Frontier, which was like a, a DC Comics put it out. They they made it into a uh, like an animated movie as well. I saw the animated movie. Yeah, uh, written by Darwin Cook, um, and it it reminded me a lot of that because it's the same era, like the fifties and sixties and stuff like that. It's all about the emergence of all these heroes and and how they come out. It, it, it did remind me a lot of that, except more grounded and more realistic and gritty. Yeah. Um, a lot more tantric sex in it than in the DC right. comics. But I'd still, like to go for a drink at uh, Ace's High. Ace's High sounds like a real good place to hang out. Just a club for Ace's to go hang out at. Yeah. Ace's and rich people, basically. Yeah, and then the, the guy who owns it has telepathy or uh, telekinetic powers and right. literally throw you out with it. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, good, <laughs> yeah. good, uh, good book. I really made a landing it. pad for all the aces who can fly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're going with that. Jesus, yeah. it yeah. was cool. Those are the interstitials, like they talked about these. Yeah, yeah the interludes little, were great. Yeah, a little they bit. They were good. Mm-hmm. We'll get a great bit book of a uh, another. Yeah. yeah, really good one. Another good choice yeah, was, with lots of weird sex in it. Yeah. That seems to be a yes. theme with us. Yeah, the weird. <laughs> and now we're on to the next. Next book is Ship of Fools. Ship of Fools. Slash. What's the reworked title? title. Oh, uh, fuck. I can't even remember now. Uh, I've got the Ship of Fools version upstairs. Yeah. Yeah. I I have it. I have the ebook for it. I'm getting the ebook. Yeah, because I can't be bothered to try and order a copy of it. If I like the book, I might get it, but we'll see. Excellent. That's next uh, sometime in March. We'll be talking about that one. Woohoo! All right. All right, well. Signing off. Well done. Good job, guys. Empty beer. Time for Fermented fiction. We did First it. First one of 2019. Woo-hoo. We're done. <laughs>